Hello and welcome to Lexi's Healthy Dynamic Life. I'm Lexi and on today's episode, I'm so super excited to have Chris Kendall of The Raw Advantage here. He is a raw chef holistic nutritionist, yoga teacher, and all-around awesome dude. We met at the Woodstock Fruit Festival last year in 2019, and I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Chris. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Lexi. It's going to be fun. Totally. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, awesome. I, my name's Chris Kendall. I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, my whole life I've been really living through my passions, such as skateboarding, which led me into raw foods and ended me up on stages and in places like the Woodstock Fruit Festival, chefing for 600 people. Uh, I just love to share the things that light me up. I love to do things that I'm called to do and to benefit anyone else I can by sharing them, you know. So that's led me to doing what I do. I just love making raw food. I love uh, living up to my highest health potential and uh, being positive and that that's kind of me in a nutshell you know been doing this for the last 16 years i've been a raw foodist uh, studying nutrition for over 20 years went to school to become a, a registered holistic nutritionist uh, just over 16 years ago in vancouver canada at a school called csnn and uh, that changed my life you know I, it's, it's been an amazing journey and uh, i'm just blessed here to share it with everyone and we're so blessed to have you. So you mentioned that skating led, a, led you to raw foods. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, since I was six years old, I've been skateboarding. And it was my entire life to the point where when I was in my early teens, I remember thinking, like, if I didn't have skateboarding, what would life be? Like, I didn't, I didn't think it was conceivable without skateboarding. And by the time I was 17, 18, I moved out. And that led me to eating very poorly. You know, before that, I was eating pretty darn good food. My mom would make dinner every single day. It was a standard American, but a healthier standard American. But when I moved out, it was like, you know, Mr. Noodle ramen was like pretty darn normal. And like 49 cent hamburgers and 59 cent cheeseburgers at McDonald's was like my splurge once a week. Get 10 of those and have that for the day. Uh, you know, street corner samosas and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I remember for one year, well, part of one year. I'd basically eat like rice with milk and sugar for breakfast and then rice and soy sauce and eggs for dinner. Uh, and then a little bit later when I was 19 living in uh, Edmonton, I'd eat like double bacon cheeseburger pizzas every day. Um, you know, skateboarding was always my life, but living that kind of a lifestyle made it a lot harder to enjoy it and to recover because as my skateboarding got more intense and I was really dreaming to be a professional skateboarder, my body and mind started falling apart. And that's really what started this kind of journey into health. Awesome. So how would you describe the diet and lifestyle that you came to choose? And how did you come to choose that? Well, um, I, reached, I reached a breaking point uh, where I was really just chronically depressed. I'd go to bed not wanting to wake up. I, I've said many times before, and I feel, feel bad for saying it, but it is my truth. I'd be in planes and wish it would crash. I was literally just, I didn't want to live anymore. And uh, I had chronic candida, joint pain, and I just knew I needed something. And I found yoga. And so I was in like 99. And uh, I took on yoga intensely. And that led me into the path of nutrition. I went to another bookstore because I was looking for something else. Yoga kind of went into vegetarianism and the impact food has on your health, physically, mentally, spiritually, right? And I was intrigued. Before that, I thought, whatever, you know, you just be a T-Rex, eat anything you want. Who cares, you know? But that really opened up my eyes and heart to a different perspective. And I went to a bookstore and one jumped out called Fit for Life, which talks about a plant centric lifestyle. And it's cool because in that book, you know, that's that's like the first main nutrition book that really opened my eyes. And the tenets of that book still ring true today. And I still share that with people. It's an amazing book. And it really talks about you know, eating more plant foods, it outlines a raw food diet, uh, it outlines a vegetarian and vegan diet, it outlines holistics. And I, I, that's, you know, really what I would say is I, I eat a, uh, a raw food diet that's predominated in fruits and vegetables. You know, I mean, I eat what nature gives us, basically, if we were living in the jungle, or if we look to our closest living relatives, I eat pretty darn close to that. Yeah, totally. And I love the fact that Fit for Life was a game changer for you. That was the book that led me 
to make a change in my life as well. I was fat, sick, nearly dead, depressed. I can totally resonate with you. And I think a lot of our listeners can too. Joint pain, just yeah. miserable. And it was such a miracle to find someone who had written about this and gave really yeah. easy suggestions to make changes in the way we eat and here you are now, all raw. So what led you to transition from a plant-based diet to raw food specifically? Well, you know, I mean, it was a, a slower transition. It took about four years to go from, you know, T-Rex style, eating whatever I could, smoking cigarettes and drinking every night, uh, to a whole foods, plant-based, high raw diet. That was about four, four and a half years. And I was progressively just reading more, you know, like once I get into something, I become kind of addicted and uh, even obsessed at a point, you know, until I was able to let it go. But nutrition was an obsession and I was reading every single thing I could. Lots of stuff on, on digestion and food combining, which was a really big interest sparked from Fit for Life. And it just led me in that direction. You know, interestingly, uh, the 16 and a half-ish years ago that I went into school, that was my secondary desire for schooling I wanted to be a chef actually and I'd have always made food and loved chefing but I couldn't find a chefing school that was vegetarian or vegan and I was already at that point very sure that I was going to be a vegan or just getting into that and my secondary choice was the the nutrition so I went to a school in in Vancouver CSNN the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition and at that point I was like full-on high raw vegan as soon as I went into school it was like fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, and then a simple cooked dinner, usually sweet potatoes and broccoli or other stuff like that with the occasional like vegan pizza or something like that, you know, but uh, I was really firm on that path and I wanted to be a raw vegan. I was reading books by uh, David Wolf, like the Sun Food Diet Success System and Nature's First Law. And I was like, cooked food's poison. Oh my God, I got, I got to do something, you know, like I really want to do this, but I never really could stick with it. I didn't really understand. And it was halfway through that schooling that I went to a Taste of Health in Vancouver. It was a vegan festival. And there was three raw speakers. And one speaker just jumped out for me, like just opened my heart up, opened my eyes up. He was on fire on stage, like literally uh, no word of a lie. I used to do a lot of magic mushrooms and stuff and sit in, sit in nature and see energy fields. His was the first I ever saw not on magic mushrooms. And I was like, my mind, my body, my spirit's telling me something. I'm going to follow him. Um, I think it was just one of those like meeting my meeting my moment, you know, and his name is Dr. Doug Graham. Uh, later, he put out the book called the 80-10-10 diet, which interestingly enough, if you didn't know, it's kind of cool. Uh, both uh, Marilyn and Harvey Diamond, who wrote Fit for Life, and Dr. Doug Graham, who ate the 80-10-10 diet, were mentored under T.C. Fry and both really believed in a high raw or all raw, raw food based diet. Uh, it's just Marilyn and Harvey kind of went the direction of you know, presenting to a larger audience with a, a more gradual kind of approach and just a bigger approach, wider, wider kind of approach, um, which their book is, is the most sold book on nutrition ever, most translated book on nutrition ever, like billions, crazy, right? So, um, but anyways, I met Doug Graham and I went, listened to his lectures. Uh, he had three that day and that night I talked to him, told him my story. He was very open at the time. Uh, helped me understand little things I didn't understand. The next day I went raw and I kid you not, that changed my entire life. Like that, just that first day raw. And it, it may not have been just the raw food. It might've been meeting my purpose, you know, because skateboarding led me to it. And this is what I believe my purpose is. And my eyes and heart opened. I remember walking down the street that first day crying. Every single person I saw along the sidewalk, I saw as myself, as love. And I just felt like, this is so amazing. I feel so good. This is what I'm here for. This is what I want to do. And that's, that's really what my life has been focused on towards since then, you know, is, is meeting Doug and, and taking those first steps and just feeling so blown open and so connected that I was like, yeah, skateboarding is a fun tool. And before that nutrition was, was all to further my skateboarding. No word of a lie. I was in nutrition school just so I could jump downstairs and heal faster. But after that day, I was like, there's something more to this, you know, so that, that just opened up a whole new game. And uh, I will mention that, you know, it took me about four and a half years of procrastinating while I was all raw and going through a lot of pitfalls and uh, learning more along that route, you know, just beyond enthusiasm that I had in order to decide that I was going to like fully put my feet in there and start up my website and start actually calling myself a registered holistic nutritionist. 
uh, raw food lifestyle coach and raw chef. It took a little while, but but uh, that's that's where I ended up, and now it's been about eleven years full time just doing this stuff, sharing what I love. That's so inspiring and so cool to hear about how just going to a vegan festival and meeting a person can make such a change in one's life. The 80 10 10 diet book for me, mm -hmm. also another game changer. So glad you mentioned two of my favorite books so of all time. Oh man, they're, 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 they're so good. And you know, I've, I've shared them with them with so many people. And I mean, I feel so blessed to say that Doug's a, a great friend now. And like, we've talked from the same, same stage. I've even written a book with him and like, you know, it, life is such a blessing and yeah those those are books that i would recommend anyone who wants to you know change their life and just more perspective on our species specific diet and holistic health in general absolutely so from a holistic nutritionist perspective what did you come to learn were the benefits of eating raw food or the importance of eating raw plant foods and even what did you notice in your skating performance as a result of eating raw plant foods Wow. Well, you know, simply put, I would just say that raw foods are all of the holistic faucets put together, right? So it's like, you know, I mean, of course, you know, our own exercise and fresh air and all that stuff is just as important. And it's just as important as food. You know, all the faucets of health are equally important. They're just spokes of the same wheel. But you look at fruits and it's like, you know, it's baked in the sun, it's nourished by the soil, it's got fresh air. Uh, you know, maybe the, the tree is waving the wind is their exercise. I'm not too sure, but you know, <laughs> I look at them as mother nature's love just made manifest for us to eat. And that's one of the things that I feel really opened me up and got me from the pit of depression was feeding myself love, you know? So uh, I, I look at fruits and vegetables as mother nature's love and just a, a beautiful uh, form made manifest through all of nature's beauty, you know? And I don't know if that really answers your question, but. Uh, Certainly, yeah. absolutely. Certainly, yeah. It sounds like not only is it just, you know, a number of vitamins and minerals, it's also the energy in the food that makes such a difference in how we feel. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it is just the highest vibing food there is, you know, realistically fruit and veggies, number two, both of them are very, very high vibing, uh, very nutrient packed. And they're, one of the key things is they're, they're just easier on digestion. You can get more for less. And that's one of the things that I continually was working towards is how can I get more nutrition, more energy with less, you know, digestive energy or chemistry energy in my body, less time so that I have more energy for everything else. And that is one of the reasons that, you know, people reverse diseases and feel better and why I felt better on my skateboard and lighter and recover faster. You know, I mean, it's, it's a wild journey, but I've, uh, being a skateboarder and being so connected with that before I went raw and after I went raw, I've broken multiple bones. Like I've broken this wrist four times, uh, three of them since going raw. And I typically recover in about a half to two thirds the time that I did beforehand. I fractured my back, uh, crushed a vertebra. And my doctor told me that he's never seen a back grow back. Like I actually, my, my vertebra is crushed and it grew back. Uh, it took a couple of years, but it grew back. And so that's a lot better. Um, I was just recently in a major, major uh, motorcycle accident with my girlfriend uh, in 2018 and nearly died and uh, recovered incredibly well. You know, my doctor's all really, really, really happy with my recovery. My uh, PT saying, if everyone was like you, I'd have the easiest job in the world, you know? So uh, in terms of like physicality, this diet is, you know, ridiculous. And that's really, again, why I got into it. I just, progressively was changing my diet so that I could heal faster, feel better, you know, feel lighter, more energetic, all those things. And the diet pays off in spades with that. Wow. That's amazing. I can't even believe that some thing the doctor didn't even believe could happen, happened for you quickly and easily with this diet. That's well, really I, 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 I kid you not that that is part of the story is, uh, Virtually every, well, actually not virtually, every single health professional that I've seen who has done tests on me, and some of them being very doubtful, like my, my family doctor, when I went and told him, like, look, you know, it was my sixth year being a raw vegan, and uh, I told him, you know, this is what I do for profession, I want to get some blood tests done, and he's like, ooh, you know, this and that kind of concerned, but when I came into the office, he was smiling so big, and he's like, you know what, man, and he's like, 
you changed someone's mind here today. And I'm like, like, what, what's up? And he's like, you know, I thought I was going to have to give you like protein pills and iron pills and you know, this and that. And he's like, your blood works the best I've ever seen in my career. I'm going to start changing my lifestyle and diet to what you're doing or more towards it. And it's funny because the, the script is flipped. Like, you know, when I go to see him, he's usually now kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You know, I still have a little bit of fish, but I like I'm eating way more like, you know, like the, the dynamic is so shifted and it's so fun. And uh, I've had multiple blood tests since then. And I remember I had an allergy test. The one uh, lady who was doing scratch testing thought that for sure I was going to be sensitive for yeasts and for parasites. And, you know, she's eating, eat, watching me eat these huge fruit meals and just thought I was like had parasites because to most people it seems like I eat an absurd amount of food so she tested me for that tested me for candida and all this other stuff and she's like I've never seen anyone with so few sensitivities um, I had one sensitivity due to like an, uh, a tattoo under my armpit she said that that was like a sensitive sensitive, sensitive zone um, but yeah you know I had you know uh, tests on a cruise it's kind of fun I went on a cruise and they tested my overall toxicity is like well you have like the lowest toxicity i've ever seen on anyone but i'd like to see a little bit more muscle on your frame you know he's a he was a jacked up uh person to gym I, I put on some since then that was a while ago but it is miraculous you know and it it's part of the reason why i'm so passionate about what i do is the results i've gotten and the results i see in other people who really apply a holistic lifestyle you know like if we just apply diet or if we just apply fitness we're only going to get partial results but we put the whole package together and we see it as you know spokes on the wheel and we recognize that it's the weakest links that make the biggest difference let's start there we see profound changes you know i'm just blessed to share that with people absolutely so eating raw foods exercising getting fresh air sunlight that's helpful for curing physical ailments candida joint pain what about for people that want to release excess weight? It's one of the most amazing and blessed filled diets or lifestyles you could have for losing weight and coming into your natural body weight. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people actually find that they lose a little more than they would wish. And then they find, wow, okay, now I can actually sculpt my body and build it how I want to, you know, but the reason it's naturally a, a weight loss diet for most people, there are a few people who don't, but that can be fine tuned very easily. Uh, the vast majority find they lose a lot of weight because fruits and vegetables are the lowest calorie per bite foods on the planet. You know, they're, they're super high in water content, they're super high in fiber, and they're very nutrient dense. Most people are used to eating really caloric dense foods that are also low in volume and relatively low in nutrition, depending on how processed they go. And what that means is it's actually hard to be satiated in getting enough volume. And it's very easy to overdo calories because you're always searching for volume and nutrition, right? So of those three main things, you're only really, really meeting one. Whereas if you're on a raw food diet, it's actually really easy to meet your nutrient needs as long as you're trying to eat enough. And it's easy to meet your volume needs as long as you're trying to eat enough and you recognize you need to eat a lot. But it can be harder to meet your calories because, again, it's so nutrient packed and there's so much volume in there. So people often, when they first start, they usually are subtly under eating calories and that leads to more rapid weight loss. And even when you're eating adequate calories, your body urinates out essentially extra calories, especially from simple sugars. And it's very easy to just remain at a very healthful, lean body mass. So You'll notice most people who are on a raw food diet for you know years and years and decades, they're usually pretty fit and trim. You know, it's a it's a commonality. And of course, you know we can overdo it. Like we can eat excess calories beyond the point of our body releasing them, so we can put on weight. I put on weight on raw food. Um, more often, that's done when we really eat a lot of fats, uh, or if we're really emotional eating and just like pushing food back way past enjoyment. But there's it's, it's hard to do, very truthfully. It's actually hard to gain weight, especially on a fruit-based diet. Yeah, totally. So from a nutritionist, holistic perspective, are there any specific fruits or vegetables that you would recommend someone eat if they want to lose weight? You know, the main thing that I, I always start with, because, you know, when I first started nutrition, I was learning about individual nutrients and individual foods and you know, I kind of looked at the raw diet as a checklist. Let's get this, let's get that. 
Um, at one point, I kind of let that go and realized that fruits and vegetables offer the most perfect symphony of nutrition. Really, if we focus on the foods we enjoy the most and we really open up our body into that place where it knows better than our mind, it starts to dictate where we go and what foods are quote unquote best for us, right? So my, my number one is just to say, you know, like pick the fruits and vegetables you love the absolute most and eat abundantly, no restriction. If you feel like you'd another, like another bite or two, go for another three, you know? Uh, it's, it's a diet where you can push the plate away because you're like, I can't have any more at every single meal and still feel and look your best, you know? So um, commonly people utilize bananas and lettuce as like a staple. That doesn't mean that they need to be a staple, but they are usually around year round. Um, they're inexpensive and they're very nutrient dense and very filling. So for people that are having a harder time getting enough calories and they find they're losing weight faster than they'd like, which what, what kind of an issue is that? That's a blessing for most people looking to lose weight. Something like bananas or pears or persimmons, you know, or date smoothies. These are all foods that have a little bit more of a caloric punch so you can get it, get more in. So you don't feel like, you know, if you, if you feel like you're having a harder time, because I know a lot of times people start off and they're like, well, I love watermelon and strawberries. Well, you need to eat a lot of watermelon and strawberries to feel balanced and even. And even if you really want to lose weight, sometimes it really stands to have at least one more caloric dense meal per day, like bananas or a day smoothie or persimmons or whatever, what other, uh, other sweet fruits there are just to get your baseline of calories. Cause if you're vastly under eating calories, then you're not going to feel your best and you start to maybe doubt the lifestyle, which, uh, I have seen people do cause they, you know, get on this lifestyle and like, I'm eating a lot. And it's like, you're only still eating like 800 calories a day. You know, you it seems like a lot compared to muffins and other stuff. Right. But, uh, you know, it does take quite a bit of volume. So that's my long winded answer for the fruits that I recommend the most. <laughs> yeah. Well, as someone um, who lost a lot of weight myself, getting the news that the hardest part was going to be eating enough, that was like the best news ever because I love to eat and I still love to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, I love to eat. And I mean, I always have eaten a lot of food so it wasn't a hard switch um it still did take a take a bit of time to understand like my first six months on raw food i was under eating and part of it was because i wasn't eating enough calorie dense fruits and so that led me to get to the lowest body weight that i really have been except for fasting you know i got down to like 155 and you know i, I normally sit around 180 now so i was a lot lighter and once i learned to eat enough consistently then i has had even higher energy levels and just even more like balanced and great feeling. So it's, it's important. Totally. And you mentioned earlier that after you um, got tested on the cruise and a, the guy said you could put on some more muscle mass and you said, you know, I yeah. eventually did. Um, yeah. What was that like for, for most of us we're led to believe that we need uh, certain sources of protein to build muscle. So from your background and your education, what would you have to say about that? Well, I mean, you know, our needs for protein are much lower than most people understand. You know, I mean, we look at a baby that is growing at a faster rate than we ever will in our life. Even top bodybuilders don't put on the mass as fast as babies do, you know, in terms of like weight per, per uh, what is it? Uh, you know, in terms of like, uh, proportional for body size, like they're doubling in size, right? Bodybuilders don't do that. So, you know, and they're really consuming roughly, you know, like about seven or six, 7% bo uh, protein, right? It's, a, it's fairly low uh, in mother's milk. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting the exact figure. I apologize for that. But I know it's, it's much lower than most people would guess. Um, there have been studies done showing, you know, like how much protein someone can get by with without muscle wasting. These are done in inhumane situations in prison camps and stuff like that. And what they found was 2%, you know, if they got 2% of their total calories from protein, even doing labor and stuff like that, they wouldn't get muscle wasting. Now as the safety mechanism and very common in nutrition, they double that figure to try and cover all ethnicities, ages, and races, you know, and so that leaves with us with around 4%, which is typically actually the uh, recommended minimum, you know? So 
with 4% as a basic minimum, we can look at fruits, which on average range between four and 8% calories, uh, or sorry, four to 8% uh, amino acids per calorie, right? So amino acids is what we require. We don't need protein. Uh, amino acids are the building blocks of protein, right? So the, the original source and all the food that people eat when they're eating whole proteins or complete proteins from animal sources is because the animals ate plants, you know, they ate grass, which contains amino acids. So that's our original protein source. Uh, vegetables range 15 to 30 plus percent protein per calorie or amino acids. So through eating an abundance of fruits and vegetables, you can get, you know, anywhere between five to 12 percent protein fairly easily. And that can meet our nutritional needs. And, you know, it's, it's interesting too. one other point on that is when we're weightlifting, when we're bodybuilding, when we're doing activity that fosters growth, it's not that we need a higher percentage of protein. It's that we're going to need more total calories to fulfill our needs for that activity, which thereby also gives us more total protein, you know? So the 80, 10, 10 diet is a great book to bring up and what Doug Graham says, and he didn't make these numbers up. He got these numbers from the biggest amount of scientific knowledge and nutritional literature is that for optimal health and fitness, a diet comprised of about 80% or more of your total calories from carbohydrates and 10% or less on average from protein and fat brings about the best results. And this is really specifically known in sports nutrition. You know, it's, it's, it's more than adequate, right? And I mean, if you want, you can eat more greens or you can eat nuts and seeds to bolster up your, your protein. If you want, you can eat sprouted lentils to really bring it up even higher. Uh, I wouldn't personally go above 15% myself, but I, I feel great anywhere in that range. And that's usually where I am with fat and protein is like, a roughly five, six percent and up to about 15. And if you want to put on muscle, it, it takes doing the work. That's the thing. You know, it's like, you know, if we're a long distance runner, we're going to be lean and mean. But if we're in the gym and pumping iron and pushing ourselves to lift heavier and heavier weights, eating enough calories and giving ourselves enough time to recover, you can put on muscle like crazy on a raw food diet. Absolutely. And so you said 80% of calories should come from carbohydrates what i mean we're taught to eat a low carb diet and that sugar is bad if i want to lose weight or maintain a healthy weight how can i be eating so much sugar yeah it's amazing right and and i mean you look at diabetes you know it's it's the easiest way to reverse diabetes you know best-selling new york times book uh is it uh mastering which one is this? Robbie Barbero and uh, Dr. Cyrus Kalbadi. Uh, they have a book out specifically on reversing diabetes with a high carbohydrate plan, which goes against what a lot of people would just think. And, you know, the truth is there's just a, a vast difference between sugar, white sugar, or high fructose corn syrup, which is often used in studies and demonized in the literature, and whole fruits. You know, whole fruit sugar has different forms of sugar in it. It has loads of water, loads of fiber, loads of phytonutrients and, and nutrients of all kinds in there. You know, it's just a, a symphony of nutrition, right? And it reacts in the body very differently. And because of that high water content and the high fiber content, again, it's hard to overeat. And, you know, sugar isn't the problem. Excess is really the problem. Getting way too much and without the fiber, without the water, without all the other components of it can cause issues. So, um, the one thing that I'd add to that is too, is, you know, if you're eating a high fat diet, especially with processed foods and oils and stuff like that, that can clog up the body a little bit more in the way that it reduces insulin function. So if somebody's eating tons of, you know, processed foods and, you know, most people are eating somewhere between 35 to 50% fat in their diet, if you're eating that much fat in your diet, then it can hinder the ability of the body to transport and deliver sugar to your cells and that can cause um you know candida or other kind of metabolic disorders and can actually give someone diabetes or pre-diabetes if they're doing that consistently whereas on the other side having 10 percent or less or in between you know 5 to 15 ish percent fat in your diet better with whole foods so we're looking at nuts and seeds and avocados and coconuts then your insulin function is very sharp and your body can very easily handle the 80 plus percent carbohydrate in your diet. And in fact, that's what our cells all run on. You know, every cell in our body, save a few in the heart, run off of simple carbohydrates. 
you know, the animals that are the most close to us uh, are eating a fruit-based diet in nature. And in fact, when you look at the primates out in nature, the ones that are the most closely resembling us are the pygmy chim chimpanzee or the bonobo, and they eat the most fruit out of all the other apes. And they're also the most peaceful and most intelligent. You know, it's, nature always kind of points in that direction. And uh, it's, it's really not an issue, very thankfully, because it tastes great, it feels great, and it leaves you more satisfied than anything else. Mm -mm. So you've given us so many good points here. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned in eating, about eating? Well, you know, I mean, one of the biggest ones is that, you know, to fulfill all of our needs, they're all pleasurable, you know, like follow pleasure, follow enjoyment, follow what nature provides, you know? So, I mean, whether we're talking about sleep or going to the bathroom or procreating or pretending to procreate you know, or eating, they're all really enjoyable and great, you know? So um, that is one of my biggest things is just like, you know, nutrition doesn't have to be about eating kibbles and bits and depriving yourself and, you know, like needing to work out and get those extra calories off because you overdid it. You know, when we're eating from nature's design and when we're eating fruits and vegetables in appropriate quantities, it's a, it's a joy. And it's about focusing on the ones you enjoy the most and sampling all of nature's bounty, getting some variety, letting your body taste new things so that you're turned on to different nutrients and different nutrient profi profiles around the year. You know, and that's how uh, variety comes in. So to me, it's just one of complete abundance and appreciation of nature. Hmm. That's awesome. Would you say that it is about a 50 50 plate of fruits and vegetables that leads to optimum health, weight loss and wellness? Or how would you go about dividing the proportions of fruit and veggies? That's a great question and an important one, you know, and I mean, there's two main ways of looking at things. And this is where a lot of people get confused is a, a lot of books and a lot of nutritional uh, studies, even they talk about volume of food. Now, when we were talking about 80, 10, 10, we're actually talking about calories, right? So um, in terms of calories, fruit predominate, you know, we're getting 80 plus percent of our calories from fruit, essentially. And I mean, trying to get a lot of calories from from vegetables is actually very hard because they are the lowest calorie source per bite on the planet, right? So even getting 4% of our calories from greens is very challenging. It's, it's, it's a lot. That's more than 99% of the people on the planet probably eat, you know? So um, as an example, I'm, I'm, you know, about 180 pounds. And if I was to get all of my calories, I, I generally eat about 3000 calories a day, 27 to 3200 calories a day. And if I'm just for ease going to get 3,000 calories a day, that looks like 30 bananas, you know, which a website was made up called 30 bananas a day, just kind of for that point, right? But uh, if I was just getting from bananas, it's like this 30, which to most people sounds absurd. Um, it's actually about 11 pounds or so of, of bananas, somewhere around there, 11 or 12 pounds. No, wait, wait one second. It's about four per pound. So um, yeah, right, right around there, right? So someone was going to point that out, the math. So anyways, um, it's around 10, 11 pounds, and um, I can easily do that in two meals. You know, uh, for me, 20 bananas is a normal meal. Mind you, when I first started, it, like eight was a meal, then 10 a little while later, then 12 a little while later, then 15. But yeah, it, it, your, your digestion improves, your stomach elasticity flexes out, and you start to feel more comfortable physically and physiologically eating larger portions as your body adapts. So that's just for that for that reason. Now, if I was going to be eating all my calories from lettuce, you know, like, for example, I, I got my app here, I can uh, actually open it up and look just to quote the numbers properly. Uh, there's a list of ingredients. And so from lettuce, where are you? Romaine lettuce, 77 calories per pound. So, you know, 3,000 <laughs> divided by 77, uh, no, what is it, 77 divided by 3,000, would that be? It's a lot of lettuce, it's a lot of, it's, it's more lettuce than anyone could ever consume, you know, we're like, we're looking at like 40 some heads of lettuce, like it's, you know, you're not going to be able to do it 
digestively or comfortably, right? So that just shows it's, it's vegetables really aren't a calorie source in that way. Definitely things like broccoli, if you cook them down, you can get more calories. But even if you're going to try and, you know, get all your calories from something like broccoli, uh, you're, you're not going to even come close. And what that leads us to is, you know, getting again, the bulk of our calories from carbohydrate or otherwise from fat. And a lot of people go towards fat because they fear sugar. But again, that lowers insulin sensitivity and also lowers our body's ability to transport and deliver. This is from 801010, transport and deliver oxygen to all of our cells. So if we want to have great insulin function, if we want to have, uh, uh, you know, really good cellular oxygenation, we're looking at a lower fat diet now. So that's calories, but the other way of doing it is volume. And if we're looking at volume, because vegetables are so low in calories and high in volume, I can actually be eating the same amount volume wise of vegetables as fruit and still only be getting, you know, like two to 4% of my calories from vegetables, you know? So, um, my, my plate is predominated by fruit for breakfast and lunch. And usually I start dinner with fruit, but dinner is a lot of veggies and it shocks people how much I eat. You know, again, after doing this for so long, my digestion is pretty big and I'm an active guy, but, I'm very commonly eating like a four to five pound dinner meal, you know, whether that's a curry or a salad. Um, it's a lot because it's usually like at least, you know, a pound and a half to two and a half pounds of vegetable matter itself. So whether that's like, you know, cauliflower or lettuce or mushrooms or a bunch of other things. And then I usually have at least a liter of dressing, sometimes more, which is pretty heavy in of itself. So it's like a, a big family size bowl. When I go somewhere, people are like, Oh, like you made that for us. I'm like, no, that's for me. You can try a scoop, you know, should have told me beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that totally brings us to the fact that you are an awesome raw chef. Um, isn't that hard to be a chef without cooking food? You know what, just like the lifestyle itself, I, I find it easier in many ways. You know, like when I was vegan, I found that a little more difficult because I was looking at, you know, like all these ingredients and making sure that they're this and that. And, you know, if I go to a restaurant, like double checking everything. Well, when I'm making food, I just, I know what the ingredients are. They're just whole foods. And it, it, it's really fun to me because it just, it brings an opportunity for more creative, uh, kind of for more creative potential, I guess. Right. Because. I can make everything from scratch. So I, I can look at any recipe and just look at the major flavors and look at the major ingredients and substitute them for raw foods. And it's the same as anything that you're making from scratch. It takes a little bit more time than if you're using pre-boxed packaged things. Uh, but to me, it's just, it's, it's loads of fun. And it was just a whole new world to explore when I got into just all raw whole foods as as opposed to before I was kind of the ghetto chef making like everything from processed foods, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. And it's just like, I think it's an opportunity to play with the five flavors and to play with fresh ingredients and, you know, to mix things up and you can make anything. Like, I mean, I, I make pizzas that I swear most people wouldn't even know they're raw food or vegan and, you know, make curries and lasagnas and French fries and, and then also just make simple things like smoothies and juices and all that fun stuff. So there's limitless creativity. It's just, it's just learning something a little bit new, you know, it's just learning the, the nuances of raw food chefing and, and combining different foods for different flavor profiles. It takes a little bit of time, but once you get the basics down, it's, it's really the same thing as making anything from scratch. It's just, you don't put it to fire, you know, and <laughs> a lot of times I, uh, you know, I make a sauce that would be, very the same like exactly the same most of my curries are based off of how they would make them in the countries that curries come from it's just i don't put them on the fire after awesome you mentioned that once you know the basics it's pretty simple to put together a recipe would you yeah. mind sharing with us maybe some of your basic tips yeah no absolutely i mean some of the simplest ones are really understanding the five flavors and a lot of people know four but there are five uh, so we got sweet, savory, pungent, sour, and the last one is umame. And umame is explained as like just yumminess. It's like it's a, a savory flavor that is often found in things like cheeses and in uh, 
sun-dried tomatoes or tomatoes um, or MSG, glutamate, you know, uh, it's in mushrooms. And there is, you know, MSG, which is added to a lot of foods and people go crazy for it, right? But it gives a lot of issues for people, you know, headaches and other things like that. But free glutamate is found in things like tomatoes and mushrooms. So they're in the plant world, they add a lot of extra savory kind of like, oh my God, what is that flavor, you know, and, and neat textures as well. So understanding those five flavors and knowing, okay, well, if I'm going to recreate a dish, what is the predominant flavor that I want? So if your predominant flavor is sweet, well, then you're going to want to start with something sweet. So you can, you know, have a list of sweet based foods. You can have a list of all the different flavored based foods and complement them. And I, I find the foods that um, really pop the most, whether we're talking about a whole food or whether we're talking about a recipe that you're making, they do have a balance of at least three or four of those five flavors. And the dishes that just pop, they usually have four or five of them, right? And sometimes it just requires like a little accent, you know, like it might be in the skin of the fruit that there's just a little bit of bitter, you know? And if you're making a dish, sometimes just adding a little bit of bitter or a little bit of sour can just bring out the flavors that much more. Um, so that, that'd be like the number one tip that I'd say in terms of really flavor pairing, um, have, you know, like one predominant flavor, one secondary, and then the others are usually accents. Uh, sometimes I like to be heavy on all of it and just like make like an intense sauce, you know, it just depends on your tastes and that's kind of where personal tastes come in. Uh, I'd also just say, have the spirit of play, you know, recognize that it, it is just play. It is just playing with food. And the more you play with it, the more lighthearted you are, the more experimental you are, the more likely you're going to find things you love, right? Because if you take it too seriously and you're worried about it, well, you're not experimenting as much and it, it's, it's just not as fun and it makes it harder to do, you know? So um, I do actually I have a whole book called Naturally Raw Some Sauces, which goes over my 10 key tips to become a sauce boss and like, you know, make some of the most tasty, delicious sauces. And I got loads and loads of recipes for free on my app and on my website, I think over a hundred on my app, um, where you can just get so many ideas and through applying those, you'll, you'll get some of the tips right in them. Cause I apply all my tips right into the recipes themselves. That's awesome advice. And so grateful for you sharing those resources as well. I was thinking, well, that sounds super fun, but for someone who is busy and constantly running around, just give me the recipes. Tell me where to get the recipes. So your app I'm is... Sorry. No, no, you, the app is um, The Raw Advantage. Yeah. yeah, it's just called The Raw Advantage Raw Recipes. And, and you're totally right. And you know, the beautiful thing is again too, like if it's all mapped out for you and you just try recipes and stuff like that, you'll learn by osmosis, right? Because you'll just start to understand some of the basics of food combining and flavor pairing and you know you can play with the recipes of themselves i always recommend that recipes are just guidelines and feel free to adapt them and use different ingredients and play with it right you find out what you enjoy the most so that's that is available on my website as well as uh the google play store and the iphone or itunes store awesome what are your favorite meals right now <sighs> Right now, you know, I mean, truthfully, banana smoothie with some barley grass juice powder is one of my all time favorites. Uh, and barley grass juice powder is just a dehydrated barley grass juice. So it's like, you know, pounds of juice put down into a powder and you just conveniently put it in there with less fiber. So I, I, I really enjoy the flavor of that. And for green smoothies, it's usually my favorite. Otherwise, oh man, I do love a banana arugula smoothie, which sounds really weird but I just love it. I just haven't had it for a couple months, but I, now I'm, I'm perked to go get some arugula or ask my mom too, if she goes to the store. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's one of my favorites. It's just a super simple, basic staple kind of smoothie that I just love. Um, but dinner wise, definitely my favorite lately, actually the last couple of years has been what I call cocoa butter veggies 2.0 or Chris's creamy curry. And it's, it's a raw vegan curry, like a East Indian kind of flavored curry that is kind of a mix of two dishes that a lot of people may recognize. One butter chicken, but of course without butter or chicken, uh, and aloo gobi, which is like, you know, cauliflower and peas and some other veggies. So it's like a vegetable curry. And you could serve it, and I have served it to uh, 
someone who's used to the authentic stuff and they wouldn't even notice necessarily that it's raw food. You know, there's certain tips I use in there, such as freezing some of my veggies and thawing them, which really softens them and makes them taste like they're cooked. And the curry sauce is just really thick and tasty. And I usually partially dehydrate some mushrooms, which just kind of crisps them up a little bit and makes their flavors even more intense. And it's, it's really dang nutrient dense and really is pretty calorie dense too. And it's just really flavorful. So I eat that quite a bit. It's like bananas for lunch and curry for dinner is a, is a pretty common thing right now uh, where I'm at and with what I can get in Saskatoon right now. That sounds so good. My mouth is watering. And um, so you gave us an idea of what your favorite go-to foods are and they sound amazing. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's so tough. Can, can I have lettuce alongside that one food? Just, you know, like to balance it out a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'd say, we'll let yeah. you have the lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it'd really be a toss up. I think it's, it's so boring to some, but it'd probably be bananas. Um, especially if I could have all varieties of bananas, that's another cheat, but, uh, so there's so many varieties, right? But I mean, they're just, you know, they're just so reliable. I rarely get sick of them, you know? Um, but really also I'd probably want to say mangoes or, you know, or cherimoya. You know, I, I often say my favorite fruit is what's in my hand in season, mm -hmm. you know, and like during different seasons, it's one of the beauties of mother nature. You know, it's like by the time you start to get a little bit sick of a food because you've, you know, you've had that nutrient profile enough and you've had that flavor enough and your body's just saturated with what it gives you the next season's there. And it's like, Oh my God, this persimmon that I haven't had for like eight months is the best thing I've ever had in my life. And after eating them until my eyeballs fall out after a couple months, it's like, okay, like I still love persimmon, but I'm ready for that next thing, you know? And it, some foods you never get sick of. I mean, I, I found, I did get sick of mango. That's why I was thinking like, do I want to say mango? Like mango is one of my all time favorite. And one year I really tried to follow the seasons and get them from different places and travel and just eat mangoes. And after six months of eating predominantly mangoes, like I was eating um, for a good portion of that, about three months of that, I was eating usually about 25 kilos. So over 50 pounds a week, you know, I was getting most of my calories from mangoes, like it's almost 60 pounds a week. Um, I started to actually get sick of mango and I was like, okay, it's time to let go of mango, you know, but it, but it, it takes some time. So, that's a hard question to answer. And thank God that we don't have to live that, right? So it's, it's nice to have some variety, but uh, those foods you love the most, you know, smash them back. People sometimes are afraid and think like, don't you get sick of eating one kind of food a lot of the time? Or isn't that bad for you just to eat bananas? And it's like, man, fruits, you know, they're, they're the closest approximate uh, perfect, perfect food for our body. Like when we look at all the nutrition we need, whether we're talking about protein or carbohydrates or fats or minerals or vitamins there's no food on the planet that comes closer to meeting our exact needs than fruit right mm -hmm. vegetables come number two and they are packed with protein and minerals so they make the perfect complement because they bring the levels up to optimal levels when you eat enough but fruit is mother nature's food made manifest for us you know it's like it's, it's perfect you know it's, it's awesome so uh, yeah, i yeah i'm a bit of a fruit nerd <laughs> <laughs> I, even, I even have a banana mustache ah oh, that's so cute I love it and I'm so glad you brought up peace love and seasonal fruit uh, I yes. just recently heard someone say oh there we go on the video we've got the shirt and I just recently heard someone say you know um, at the time of recording this we're in the COVID-19 quarantine right yes. like isn't it such a blessing that in cold and flu season, it's orange season and we can get. Yes. I, I love oranges. Oh my Lord. Like when it comes to orange season and citrus, it's like, you know, it, the winter months get a little more sparse with variety, but we always have bananas and we have mad citrus and loads of vegetables and we're blessed. We're back in the garden of Eden. You know, we, we have worldwide shipping, even in a crisis like this, where we get a lot of varieties and, you know, people can complain and say like, oh, the quality isn't this, or I wish it was in the tropics, but it's all what you focus on. You know, like when we would have lived in the jungles or if we were living in nature, 
it's not like we're eating the most pristine, perfect thing every single meal, every single bite. A lot of times we're opportunists and we might not come across great food sources for, for a long time. That's how we survived was needing to feast and famine and, and sometimes fast and sometimes eat bark and sometimes eat other stuff. Like compared to nature, we probably have the most, most beneficial food, pre, uh, food availability of, of ever, right? Except for maybe the garden or whatever you want to believe, right? So it's like, we're just so blessed. And uh, I love the variety and the availability and how Mother Nature provides a variety over the year. It's just, it's just so awesome. And hearing that perspective is just so beautiful to be so grateful and to feel blessed for all the fruit and the vegetables that nature's provided. I'm curious, when you first started, or even now, do you ever crave uh, to eat things that aren't fruits or vegetables that, or that aren't raw plant foods? And if so, what do you do about that? Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, I meet all of my nutrient needs and my texture needs and my flavor needs through raw foods and, and being creative with recipes, you know, so when I first started, you know, I, I really ate simply. I didn't eat a lot of greens. I ate a lot of fruit and that felt really good. But as time went on, I really noticed I wanted more savory flavors and it led me to eating more vegetables and, you know, through emotional issues and other issues, I, I found myself choosing foods that weren't what I was seeing as my ideal. Um, most of that though was through coping with, you know, either emotional stresses or social stresses and not really knowing how to fulfill it in a raw food way. Uh, these days that's not really much of a concern. And again, with my recipes, whether I'm making curries or things like that, uh, it makes it really easy for me. The one thing with full disclaimer that I do eat that isn't technically all raw is frozen peas. If I can get fresh peas and freeze them myself, I do that, you know, cause they work really well and they can be eaten very, very deliciously raw. Um, but when they're frozen in the store, they're technically blanched and, they're one food that I just, one, really enjoy, and two, find absolutely no detriment to eating on occasion in my curries. So I sometimes buy those if I can't get them fresh. Um, but other than that, you know, I mean, every year it gets easier and easier, and this is just what I do. You know, like in the beginnings, if I did crave something and I went for it, it set me on kind of a, a hoopty in my mind where I'd think of every single cooked food that I ever was couldn't eat or didn't eat and want to eat all of them. And when I switched it to, I can really eat anything I want. It doesn't define me. It doesn't make a difference in my self-worth. It's, it's just food and it's just choice and experience. And I noticed that when I ate cooked foods, I generally feel heavier and more cloudy. And it kind of felt like I was putting sunglasses on where all of a sudden the world was just a little less bright. And I had to kind of push myself to work out rather than just feel like moving and, and being joyous and bouncy. And it just led me to, wanting to choose raw foods more and more and more and through getting consistent with that it's just it's just the new norm right and of course in mass devastation or in a, a major emotional thing you know they say uh, a smoker's always a smoker or a drinker's always a drinker when the cards are down well you know we are all raw foodists you know i love doug graham saying you know we're all raw foodists some of us just choose to eat cooked food and cooked food is one of the biggest drugs uh, in that it causes a psychological or physiological shift, right? It causes a state change. It numbs us out. It slows us down. And most of us use it as a security blanket, as, a, as a, something to hold on to when times get tough, right? So for most people and for myself included, for a long period of time, when things got really hard, that's what I'd re be looking to for, you know, to, to soothe the pain I was feeling. And it really takes learning new coping mechanisms and part of that is just being okay with feeling intensely because when you're eating a raw food diet, you feel everything way more intensely because you don't have as much energy diverted to digestion. So you have way more energy for emot emoting and you're not numbed out by cooked food. So you feel things way more intensely and you can be okay with that and you can learn new coping mechanisms. Then those cravings don't hit you, right? Because most of those cravings are just for as an emotional salve. Now, um, the last thing I'll say on that long-winded answer here is there are there's of course the possibility of having nutritional cravings right of having specific cravings to be fulfilled by nutrition and you know there are some times where you might crave a food some people crave chocolate for example you know it's the most key example and it may be that they just want chocolate or they want the stimulation but it may also be that they normally get their magnesium from chocolate and they're not used to eating a lot of greens 
And when you start eating a lot of greens, your body starts to identify the key nutrients in those foods. So the cravings can actually shift from chocolate to greens. And all of a sudden you can just be like, oh, I want greens, right? So knowing which nutrients are high in certain foods. And if you have a really intense craving that keeps on coming up, that's what they say, true needs persist. So if you have a craving that keeps on coming up time and time again, look into the nutritional components of those foods because there could be something in there that you're actually requiring and look to replace it with other whole, fresh, ripe, raw fruits and vegetables. And that can help you let go of that craving. So that's just a, a quick little tip on cravings and all that fun stuff. That's so cool. I'm so glad you shared that. So if I crave chocolate, I will turn to the greens. Yeah, and just I'm, get those greens. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. Or raw chocolate, right? You can eat some raw chocolate if you want yes. to. Right? Yum, absolutely. Uh, it's just so cool that you've been through this yourself and you've also created some delicious recipes that, you know, are close to home. The pizza, the curries, the shepherd's pie I saw you just posted, um, yep. but it's still all raw plant foods. So thank you for doing all that work for everybody out here. <laughs> it's a pleasure and it's a play. You know, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't enjoying it the heck out of it, right? So. Absolutely. And, and just, you had mentioned that when you were eating cooked foods, it was like a chore to go exercise or to work out. But when you decided to eat raw plant foods, you had the energy to move. Uh, what are your favorite ways to move? What do you like to do to get all that energy out? <laughs> well, you know, my absolute favorite really is skateboarding and surfing. Uh, I love yoga a lot. Um, I like to just sing, like dance around and play and, and have a lot of fun. I like to rock climb. Uh, I just like being active in general. You know, I've actually really developed a strong love for the gym and for weightlifting. Uh, you know, since this motorcycle accident in 2018, I needed to do tons of rehab, like six hours a day, five days a week often, and, and sometimes more, sometimes eight hours a day. And I just fell in love with it because of the results it gave me. And that's kind of the same with the raw food lifestyle. It's like, I never would have dreamt to be eating in the way I do now. Like 20 years ago, I would have thought I was the biggest dork, to be honest, you know, and made fun of me. But the results are undeniable. And, you know, when you give things a chance and, you know, you, you enjoy and try and make the best of things, sometimes things that you think are weird and crazy can all of a sudden be like, oh my God, this is my favorite thing I've ever done, you know? And, it's the same with eating a raw food lifestyle and it's the same with being fit and working out. Um, you know, it just makes you feel so darn good. It's a, a way to push yourself and, uh, and the results are really fun as well. Absolutely. The results are definitely what kept me on a raw plant food diet at first. And then I realized all sorts of other benefits in my energy levels, my mental clarity, relationships. It really just goes on and on right yeah <laughs> like it, it's hard to find any any negative it's like there's really no drawbacks you know what i mean and any perceived drawback because someone could say like oh but it's harder socially well you know what the reality is it's an opportunity for you to really break into vulnerability and be social for the reasons of being social rather than food you know because a lot of times again we use food as a mask right and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how we've been societally trained. But when we let go of that mask or that distraction or that cover up, we're left real and raw and vulnerable. And that's a beautiful thing because that allows us to grow and that also instigates growth in others. So I think it's just a, a double blessing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing all of this goodness, all these tips and tricks and your story. Do you have any lasting advice or words of wisdom or inspiration for us well you know the last thing that i'd like to say and i think is very very important is just be very loving uh, very patient and very compassionate with yourself you know it's taken a lifetime to get where you are and it's not going to be a snap your fingers overnight no matter what your brain thinks to just switch everything because this is a vortex of positive change you know, you change your diet, it changes your life on every single level, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and it takes some time. And, you know, I think just having like adult sized portions of compassion for yourself and adult sized portions of patience with yourself 
um, and recognizing that you are divine spirit, you are love, you are perfect as you are. You just have the opportunity to experience shifts and to you know, clean that level of perception within yourself by eating cleaner foods and treating yourself amazingly. And it's a process. So enjoy the whole thing, every single step and, uh, you know, enjoy each bite. I love that. I love it. So good. So enjoyable. Love, light, love every bite. Thank you so much, Chris. It's been such a pleasure getting to know more about you and your story and everything you have to offer us. We really appreciate you taking the time today. On, honor and pleasure. Thanks so much for inviting me and for the chance to connect with each one of you guys. Definitely a pleasure and hope to see you guys out at a festival or a treat or online or on anywhere, you know, say what's up. Give me a hug. Give me a poke. Give me a punch, whatever. It feels good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just excited to meet and share and grow with everyone. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for listening and I hope you have a happy, healthy, dynamic day. Love it. See you guys.